My product development journey has been a wild one as it is for most people. And today I would like to share a powerful advice and lesson I would have given to my younger self if I was just getting started as a Scrum or Agile practitioner. Because I made so many mistakes, I had so many failures. And that is okay, I'm not complaining. Because you learn nothing from success and you learn so much from your failures. Did you know that Thomas Edison made 1,000 unsuccessful attempts at inventing the light bulb? When the reporter asked, how did it feel to fail 1,000 times? Edison replied, I didn't fail 1,000 times. The light bulb was an invention with 1,000 steps. In this video, I want to share with you one important thing that I learned from my failures. If this sounds interesting to you, stay with me. And be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button real quick. Let's get started. One of the things I wish I knew earlier is a minimum viable product or MVP. This is a concept adopted from a Lean Startup. It is a version of a product with just enough features to be useful by early customers who can then provide feedback to future product development. Usual preparation time is 24 to 48 hours, yield the most new version of your product. And why MVP is so powerful? Well, 35% of small businesses fail because there is no market need for their products or service. But some careful upfront planning it doesn't have to be kind that kills your business. MVP or minimum viable product are the first sprint of your product. They help you identify your product's core features and give you something to show prospective customers. Now here is a step-by-step -step guide on how to build your MVP. First step, decide on a budget. Because MVPs are meant to be scrappy, so don't go with the big budget. Spend as little as possible so that you are not spending money before making money. Step number two, set a deadline. The MVP step shouldn't be a bottleneck, so don't waste too much time building one in case it does not work out. Make sure your deadline gives you some kind of time constraint. If you give yourself a weekend, it will be done in a weekend. Step number three, pick a features and flow. So keep it simple. For physical products, decide on the core elements it needs to function at the basic level. For digital products, map out the user flow. The user flow diagram is a step-by-step -step visual mapping process, outlining what a user does to finish a task or to complete a goal throughout your product. So keep essentials, non-negotiables and custom validated features and cut nice-to-haves, clutter and anything not aligned with your unique selling point. Step number four, build it. For physical products, make the initial prototype yourself or get a supplier to create a sample. But for digital products, try building with a convenient non-code tool. So stick to the three F's at this stage. Make it fast, functional and free as possible. Step number five, test it. Your MVP may be simple, but it still needs to impress. For digital products, test different environments like um, browsers and operating systems and conduct quality insurance on the user journey. Step number six, ship it. Put your MVP to the real test by getting it in front of your customers. And start with your friends and family first. Get their feedback using tools like Survey Sansum and see if it's a like product they are excited about. Then you will know if it's truly worth pursuing. And this is it, six simple steps on how to build your MVP. Now let me give you one example of my successes. A couple of years ago, when I started to build Agile and Scrum Masterclass, I created the MVP first, meaning that I put the minimum kind of effort that's going to get some results for my students. So MVP version of my course was not a 10 to 40 hour long multi-comprehensive course because I didn't want to spend weeks and months putting together this long comprehensive course. Why? Because I didn't know if it's going to sell yet. And so I didn't want to spend all my time initially on something that I'm not sure of. Instead, I have created the minimum viable product first, 
I think my first version of uh, Agile and Scrum Masterclass was like a two to three hours course that I believed is going to help students to achieve better understanding of Scrum framework and Agile practices. So I used this first version of Agile and Scrum Masterclass as a minimum viable product to get feedback to improve my course in the future. And I knew exactly what needs to be improved because of that feedback I was getting. So what my students need to learn, so I added more of those things. What they didn't like, so I removed these things. While I was improving my course, he starts to run better and better and better. And now this course is version 9, 22 hours long focusing on transformation in the Scrum career for Scrum Masters and Product Owners with new updates that are coming up on soon. It's kind of optimizing a product with a minimum viable product approach. So my message to you is work smarter, not harder. Thank you for watching. If you want to check this course, check the first link in the description. Bye.